Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the S3 Podcast. I am Wooly. That dude over there is Mike Sanders. Um, today, we don't want to talk about it, but we do feel kind of the need to talk about this um, this Wildwood, New Jersey fiasco, this H2OI event, which is not even remotely affiliated to the original H2OI. It's kind of like an unauthorized use of their name because of their previous, whatever, reputation and popularity. Whoever these people are, I guess, are deciding that they're going to use that name to try and continue the chaos. Um, And in their defense, I think the original H2OI was pretty mellow. And as oftentimes Volkswagen events do, they build and build and more and more people come and what turns into like a chill beach weekend or mountain weekend or whatever ends up being a big chaotic thing and they get shut down. And so I think it was, you know, five or seven years ago when the original H2O kind of, you know, bailed. But, you know, people that don't want it to die keep trying to carry on that name and it's not authorized, but it is what it is. So we kind of got to call it what they call it, which is H2OI. Um, Anyway, I'm not quite as well versed. It's a tricky story because there is some official New Jersey news in there, but then there's also just a whole lot of hearsay and commenting and stuff like that. So what we're saying could be factual or not factual. We're kind of trying to weed through and find the facts. It also could change at any moment. But um, what happened, Mike? You're right. Um, I'm still trying to sift through all the BS to see what's real and what's not and who was affiliated where. But long story short, uh, this was a pop up event. Um, The old H2OI was always held in Ocean City, Maryland. This was done in Wildwood, New Jersey. It was done under the name or the guise of the H2OI uh, meet name. Anyway, long story short, this is always a very, very highly ticketed event. In other words, people show up, um, the cops are there to hassle you and to get you out of town. Can't really blame them. It's always done in sleepy little beach towns um, where people are trying to vacation and have a good time towards the end of summer. So I get it, you know, but it used to be this cute kind of show up in your cool cars, cause a little bit of ruckus, get your ticket like a man and then get out you know it was always for for simple things too dark of tent car too low car too loud that kind of thing um but as has been happening a lot lately the freaking takeover kids came in here and brought it to a whole nother level and that's basically taking car culture and let's call it what it is meshing it with the idea of rioters um and it's it's it just dude it always just ends so badly i was just in here watching some of the videos and it's it's just the dumbest most immature dangerous shit that i've seen in a long time like i feel like we've done some dumb stuff in cars in our days for sure some regrettable stuff but nothing like this nothing where i'm out there i mean these guys look like they're literally trying to hurt people and trying to break things it, it's it's ridiculous anyway Long story short, two people are dead. Several others are in intensive care. It wasn't one accident. It was multiple accidents. Um, Apparently, there was some guy named Gerald J. White. He's the one that's kind of all over the news. Um, I'm having trouble putting all the pieces together. It seems like he was in some sort of drag race or doing a burnout or something and hit two pedestrians, uh, so not even people in cars, and and killed them. And there was a third that I believe that he hit as well that's in critical condition right now. There was another accident where it looked like a newer BMW was drag racing at a red light and plowed into a golf cart, which, I mean, like I said, man, these are sleepy little beach towns. Typically, it's a you know, pretty intense population in a very small area. So what they do is they let everybody drive around in golf carts uh, just to keep the traffic down and get it where you can get where you need to go. Um, so when you got cars racing up and down the road, doing really, really dumb shit and pulling burnouts, it's it's just begging for trouble when you got slow golf carts running around. 
and god dude it was it was just chaos and now people are dead people are going to jail and there's real consequences for this not just for them but i mean for the automotive community and automotive aftermarket as it is like as if we didn't have a big enough target painted our on our backs right now with all the the ev stuff of us not being green and just you know uh, the epa's coming after us with the uh uh, the, the the Clean Air Act. I mean, we are automotive enthusiasts are the new villains, and this further vilifies us. And the worst part is, most of the people that do this takeover stuff, they're not even like real automotive automotive enthusiasts. They're like the guy that you don't want to invite to the the thing. They just kind of show up and go crazy, do something really really dumb, and then typically we're left there to pick up the pieces. So that is super damn frustrating i am glad they caught the guy apparently he after he did it was trying to flee the scene and get the hell out of there but they they did get him so i don't know man it's a frustrating situation and this is the kind of thing that really puts us in a really really bad national spotlight and like i said makes us the villains so let's talk about it i know you were writing an article about this recently and you kind of stopped yeah, I was actually working on an article when we started this podcast, and I might just go ahead and read it, but, um, you know, just, just so I don't leave things out, because I didn't, like, I just wrote it. I haven't, like, reread it and, like, kind of committed it to any sort of memory, but, like, y- you're absolutely right. I mean, we're, we're mm, I was looking at comments on some of these, uh, you know, Wildwood news pages and stuff, because, of course, the residents are all talking about it. And, like, this is a fact of life. People stereotype. You know what I mean? And I'm seeing, you know, they're not saying, hey, that one lunatic. They're saying these assholes, you know, these assholes in their stupid cars are coming to our town and now they've killed two residents or whatever, you know, and it's it's um, it. That kind of thing, man. Like, I, I talk about it. Here, I'm just going to freaking read it. I'm just going to read it. And then I'll awkwardly leave out any things that I think might be too offensive. Because like I said, I haven't I haven't really proved this yet. But here's where my thoughts were going. We have a, a, a culture problem in this country. And that is glaringly obvious. Uh, what we saw at Wildwood, it wasn't a little disruptive. And you were talking about that. You know, like... I said, it wasn't a little disruptive. It was totally destructive. And there's a difference there. Historically, hot rodding culture has always been a bit disruptive, right? That's kind of part of it. You raise a little hell. But there's always been a level of charm to the disobedience. You know what I mean? It's always been like, what did I say? I said, there's always enough morality, enough good judgment, and enough overall intelligence in hot rodders historically and when i say hot rodders i include the original tuners as hot rodders uh same mentality maybe different cars maybe from japan instead of america same mentality there's always been enough morality good judgment and overall intelligence that it rides the line between bad boy and good guy and so you get away with it you know and accidents have always kind of happened but overall there was a certain appeal to hot rodding, um, you know, America's always loved the automobile and, and you kind of gotten away with it, you know? Um, there was a sweet spot is what I'm trying to say. What we saw here and what we're seeing in this takeover and you put it really well where you said it's like mixing like car culture with rioting, it's more rioting, it's more destructive and anarchy than it is car culture. If you look at the cars, they blow, like they're not, car people they're not putting work into these cars they don't have any respect for the cars they're tearing the shit out of them and they don't care what or who they harm in the process anyway um i said what we're seeing now though this is truly ugly this is different this is not car culture it's just trash people in trash cars doing trash things it's criminal um I said, this is going to sting a little bit. What did I say next? I said, (laughs) oh, I said, let's look at where we're at right now in the modern world and news and everything else. Um, You know, I said, um, uh, wake up. The automotive industry 
an automotive culture already has a target on its back, which I think is exactly what you said. So we're, we're on the same page here. I said the current administration wants to push an EV agenda. True. Sorry if it stings. And this kind of ignorance that we're seeing at Wildwood is giving them literally the silver, silver platter to wake the woke and vilify car culture as a whole. Um, I said, let's look at how this plays out time and time again when things like this hit the news, right? Uh, if a criminal commits a crime, we now, we blame the police. Or if it fits the narrative, we blame white privilege. We damn sure don't blame the criminal. When a psychopath shoots up a school, what do we blame? Guns. So let's follow this path and see where it leads. When an idiot street racer kills somebody, you're going to blame street racers. You're going to blame car cultures. And anybody with a hot car on the road is going to be associated with criminal acts now. Um, that's the way this is going to go. This is what we're handing, you know, I call them the woke, call them whatever, the EV people, the people that want, you know, whatever. We're just handing this shit on a silver platter right now because some people that are not car people are being idiots, but it's a very convenient lumping you know, into, into us. Um, let me see. I said, um, you know, yeah, so we blame anything but the disease culture. So, you know, where I'm already seeing it. People are not blaming the root of the problem, which is we have a big culture problem. They're blaming, you know, the cars. They're blaming the street racers. They're blaming whatever, anything else. Um, uh, I mean, I can finish this later. I can get into it now if you want to. Um, do you have anything else to say on that? No, no, no. Keep going. Okay, because then I transition. Um, and I say, what I'm about to say next has my own personal career bias and frustrations in it. I admit that. But I'm going to say it anyway, because I believe in a large part it's true. I said a part of this um, is fallout. Uh, of the automotive aftermarket for abandoning not only print, but other traditional established media. That might not make sense right away. But I said, hear me out. Traditional media has the integrity to inspire a culture in positive, inspirational ways. Anybody over 35 knows that that's what magazines did. You know, that's what got them into car culture. And, and it was positive. Um, let me see. Uh, I said, that's what magazines did, at least before they all got bought up to some sold out corporate giant, which, you know, kind of happened in the earlier 2000s. That kind of stuff started happening. Um, I said, also, I lump uh, legitimate car events, you know, um, like the, the spectator events, the events you go to. I lump that into what I would call traditional media category. Uh, I said aftermarket companies used to sponsor, if not attend, these legitimate car events that were hosted by responsible professional organizers, not fucking idiots. Um, I said, but about a decade ago now, we can trace that back, the aftermarket companies started pulling their advertising budgets from this traditional media, which includes magazines and events, in order to reinvest that budget into their own social media pages. See, that's where this whole thing started turning. So instead of, anyway, I'll keep going in here. Um, let me see where I was real quick. Um, okay, I said a decade ago, yeah, yeah, yeah. They started pulling their budget, you know, from the traditional places to invest it in their own social media places. They were fixated on becoming their own media. That's absolutely true. There was a change about a decade ago where every automotive aftermarket manufacturer manufacturer like the cool aftermarket parts companies started to become their own media or at least try to i said it was a selfish move in regards to the broader strength and health of the i'm sorry it was a selfish move in regards to the broader strength and and health of true car car culture but it was one that was easy to justify <clears throat> because they could count clicks and they could be the master of their own little media domain, right? Which was great for them. Uh, many of them started doing car features, trying to do online magazines and stuff like that. They made YouTube channels. A lot of them even started hosting their own events, and we can think of a few. Um, the thing is, can you call it true media if it's really just self-promotion to sell products? I personally don't think so. Uh, I think that there was a line of just 
car culture integrity that was crossed uh, and true call and the true car. The, I'm sorry. The true culture behind the aftermarket industry started to wilt when the aftermarket industry did not reinvest into the aftermarket industry anymore. Um, they just started to invest into themselves. It was selfish. Um, I said simultaneously, it put marketing dollar steroids into the social media platforms and helped to make them the giant monsters that they've become. Literally, every industry did this, not just the car industry, but they started taking the money that would have been reinvested to make a stronger industry, and they gave it to big tech, to the social media platforms that, by the way, do not want cars as we like them on the planet anymore. They, they want it gone. Um, so you were giving money to the devil. You were giving your budget to the devil on that. Um, so then I say cut to present day and the kids now go to social media to learn about car culture, period. There's nowhere else to go. Everything else is gone. Algorithms decide what's going to be seen. And on social media, car culture is not represented by professionals who have a real interest in building the future of it and strengthening it. Uh, in fact, on the contrary, it's overrun with ignorant attention seekers who only have a vested interest in their own popularity. Um, I said the potential to go viral is now bigger than the block as it was back in our day. You didn't do dumb shit when you're only gonna impress 30 people. But now these people think that they're impressing the entire country, if not globe, and it makes them, they're already dumb. So it makes them lose their mind, right? Um, I said, it's global. You, you, you know what kind of pressure that puts on an idiot who needs attention? It puts impossible pressure on an idiot when the attention is global, right? Like they, they, they cannot shut up. I said, if there's one thing we've learned, it's that social media is the miracle grow for ignorance. The algorithm will always favor ignorant things being watched by ignorant people. And then that's where I kind of stopped because that's where we're at. Like ignorance is the driving force here. Absolutely. I mean, I call it the the dumbing down of car culture, and and a lot of it can be attributed directly to let's just take Instagram as a platform for example. It's a good example because it do, it never does a deep dive. It just kind of like yeah, I, I still remember how our magazine changed to keep up with what Instagram was doing because we were always about doing big intricate builds, right? Featuring cars that were had a really a lot of work into them. Instagram made it to where all you needed was suspension, wheels, tires, slamming on its nuts, camber the wheels in, get a couple of really, really dope shots. It could be the most haggard, busted up car in person that you would ever see in your life. But if you made it look good in just two pictures, boom, clout, all the clout you could possibly want. And it's free. It's a free app as opposed to like print media. So how do you compete with that? You can't. So now you're losing to a free product that's not nearly as high quality as what we were doing. So, so yeah, you're right. That is how industries absolutely lose ground. And at this point, it's not just losing ground. It's gone. Like we'll never get it back. So the, the professionals no longer get to dictate what happens and what people see and how people react to certain things in the industry as they're supposed to, the algorithm does. And let's face it, man, the algorithm really acts like people who really, really like the fucking Kardashians, you know? It's just popular bullshit. So yeah, you get a couple people out there screaming and yelling at an intersection with their camera phones out, and people are drag racing and doing smoky burnouts and doing really, really stupid, highly questionable things that's going to get a heck of a lot more views than somebody who's probably walking around at a sanctioned car show looking at cool, high-quality builds. No, it's just some clapped-out Dodge getting ready to ram into the next pedestrian or some Mustang with a guy who just bought it and doesn't know how to freaking drive stick, and he's going to, you know, biff it into the curb. I mean, that's just how it goes, man. It's all shock factor. They, they want the shock value. That's what the algorithm likes. It loves shock value. And if you're looking for clout, I guess takeovers are where it's at. It's not for me, though. It's, it's dangerous, stupid bullshit. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I don't, even, I don't even get it. Like, it's not giving anybody clout. It's just, 
What, yeah, what is it? The people all have their little phones up hoping that somebody gets hurt or hit or arrested or whatever so that they can be the ones to capture it. Nobody ever knows who it comes from. I mean, this is, it's just, oh, it's just the definition of ignorance, man. Um, and we're seeing a generation, you know, because these are young guys, we're seeing this generation that is now growing up on social media viral bullshit. And so it's like all they know. Yeah. It's not about cars anymore. It's like you said, it's just about destruction and and it i don't know where we go from here dude like i mean that's it like when i started kind of looking back at this story it hit me hard dude like i I just kind of sat there staring at this i'm like dude an 18 year old girl is dead that girl was my daughter's age when my daughter was born you know what i mean so that kind of shit really hits me at home now You know, and I don't know what the situation was or what they were doing, but the fact of the matter is she's not coming back home because of some piece of shit. And I tend to give people the benefit of the doubt, too. Like, I know that, you know, like you said, me and you have done questionable things with cars and gotten away with it. It, it, Who knows how close to the edge that we were of something tragic happening. And we got away with it and we were never any the wiser. Um, I think that there are good people out there who fuck up. Um, and I don't think that it, you know, it, it's hard to just cast stones. You know what I mean? But looking at this guy, he ain't one of them. I think this dude was a piece of shit. And I think he had a lot of prior problems. And, you know, he doesn't represent car culture. He doesn't represent what we're about. Car culture, you know, if you're... If you're one of these like woke EV people that are listening, trying to like, yeah, man, we're going to bet. Just listen, dude. Like there's a lot of us that car culture, like it creates a sense of discipline of seeing things through of, you know, building something. It is art. You guys might not get it. Some of y'all might not get it. But for us, it's like a, it's an expression thing. Um, You know, this stuff doesn't come easy, but that's not those people. These people it's not the same man they are just they are just there to riot like you said they're just there to cause shit and cars for some reason seem to be you know that common thread here but um it doesn't represent what we're about at all Mm. i don't know where you go from here that's the problem is that the aftermarket car culture has has lost it they've lost their pull they've lost their voice they've lost their leadership it's not there anymore it's not gonna happen we were preaching that this was gonna happen in the last decade of print magazines that we made it has happened like there is no leadership who's gonna get up here you know what i mean like it's over like where like uh, where okay so in s3 are we gonna get up there and talk about how this needs to stop oh wait yeah we're not printing anymore because there's no budget for print because the aftermarket has turned their backs on that because they want to build their own fucking YouTube channels and social media. So like, where do you go from here? And I think the aftermarket companies, hell, eight eight out of 10 of them are dead already and they don't know it. You know, like with the way that the automotive industry is turning, I've never seen anything quite so weird. I've never seen the automotive aftermarket not rally together and fight this stuff. Instead, half of them are ignoring it. And like 20% of them are actually thinking that they're going to be part of it. Like Borla making a speaker for an exhaust. That's the dumbest shit I have heard in this century. Like, are they that out of touch that they just think that they're gonna turn into a speaker company for EVs? Is that the play? Yep. Yeah. And they're making cool little videos of people in Hoonigan shirts with masks on, t- drag racing a Mach E <clears throat> with a speaker under it. Meanwhile, the whole culture is under attack and, and they're not doing shit about it. They're completely out of touch. Yeah, because they just wanna figure out where their next their next buck, their next meal is gonna come from. I mean, Maybe I, don't that's true. I don't blame them for trying to play play the game. But- <clears throat> 
I, I do wish the industry would grow some balls and gain some freaking leaders to do something here because guys if you have enjoyed what the true automotive aftermarket industry is and, and the automotive culture over the past 10 15 20 years enjoy it while you still can because unless something drastic changes it's going to be gone real fast if we don't have we don't have leaders we have fucking influencers yeah and influencers are out to build their influence that's it they're out to build their page their youtube channels they're they're out to get parts for their wild builds where they're sticking crazy ass motors into crazy ass car like this this culture needs leaders it needs integrity it needs authenticity so if you guys are listening and you feel like you know you're getting spoken to be that like try and be that i mean the, the good news is you don't have to build a magazine anymore because there aren't any that was a real bitch you know what i mean like that yeah. took a lot of investment the yeah. platforms are free now <clears throat> so you know it's hard to stand out when you're actually saying something it's hard to get noticed because the algorithm doesn't want real talk we experience that all the time as soon as we start getting real facebook shuts it down man um yeah. as soon as you post a pretty car on pretty wheels facebook loves it you know it's it's just so it's going to be an uphill battle, but like you guys listening, if you feel like a calling for that, like, God damn, man, like the industry needs it. It's probably not a battle worth fighting at this point, but you should do it if you like this culture. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that at least here in the immediate future, events like this, um, where you kind of, everybody shows up and, you know, kind of takes over a town. Those were always some of the funnest events, like like Import Alliance. You know, they're just so great, man. All the friends get together, and it's just thousands of us, and we kind of congregate and meet at the Speedway during the day, and then everybody has a big hotel party at night. And it got, it, like you said, it always got a little bit rowdy, a little bit rambunctious, but for the most part, because everybody was there with the same goals in mind, it it, it worked. You know, there was there was never too yeah. much of a problem. Um, but now I think you're going to see events like this getting shut down and they're just not going to happen anymore. I think that especially dude, when people die, you can't put that genie back in the bottle. You can't close that box again. It is open and the cops know, and they're going to put their foot down immediately as soon as you get to town. And guess what? Like I said, you guys are the new villains, whether, whether you like it or not. I certainly don't. That's what we are. Because I, I even notice it now whenever I drive some of my cars around. Not so much the Mustang because the American muscle car stuff is still, you know, respected more for some reason. But whenever I drive my Type R or my Evo around, certain people just look at you a certain way. Like you're a little hoodlum looking to cause trouble. And they're not wrong to look at you that way when shit like this is in the news. So stuff like this has repercussions and it's going to affect the way that we do business in the automotive culture you know yeah i mean look the golden era you know of import alliance back when it was really building and really creating um a whole like generation of new enthusiasts it was different man like we raised hell at the la quinta you know what i mean like the the la quinta was not happy with us yeah. but we would get there and everybody start drinking in the parking lot <clears throat> and raising hell and blasting stereos and you might get like a standing burnout but like it didn't go out into the public streets the la quinta was not happy but like we were there for the night you know what i mean like it was that kind of thing and then when it came to the daytime importer alliance ran a tight ship they would never <clears throat> they would never allow that crap these things were held at speedways you know often more often than not and um and it was very tightly regulated, man. Um, that's the thing. There are no leaders of this stuff. There's no staff. There's no organizer. It's it's not a a, a real event. It's a it's it's the takeover. <laughs> that's where the name comes from. Yeah. Um. So I don't know. I mean, we can go on and on about what it used to be versus what it is now, but we can summarize by saying it used to be something really special, and now it's shit now it's it's now it's crossed to criminal and like it's like you said you can't take that 
back. Um, so, I don't know. You know, watch your ass. Like, it, it just, we got to somehow find a way to separate that from what we're about. And that's going to be very difficult. And it is going to take leaders. Um, so if you feel like you is one, then be one. Because you're needed now. You know, like, literally, like, we need to build the army. Like, nobody else is going to do it, I don't think, at this point. So, it's on all of us, man. If this means anything to you, you got to kind of stand up and declare it at this point. Yeah. 100% agree. Um, that's all I got, man. What about you? That's it. That's it. All right, guys. Sorry to bum everybody out. It was Prayers a sad to the family, you know? Yeah. It's a serious one. Uh, it has to be talked about. It sucks. Anyway, if you, as always, thanks for listening. If you made it this far, uh, if you guys like what we're doing, please download the S3 app. We're going to keep you up to date with stuff like this. So you can stay up to date what's happening, uh, with the automotive industry, the, the aftermarket, the manufacturers. We, we try to do it all as far as news goes. Plus Wooly's always out there blasting out some badass features, uh, as a little bit of eye candy. Anyway, have a good night, guys.